Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Seed Virtual STEM Expo STEM Story Time. If you've not already done so, we invite you to visit usca.edu slash seed to access all of the other resources, presentations, exhibits, and trivia for the Virtual STEM Expo. Today, thanks to our friends at STEM Story, excuse me, Storytime from Space, we will be watching a recording of an astronaut, Mark Vandehe, reading the book, Next Time You See a Sunset, all the way from the International Space Station. Followed up with our live special guest, Dr. Gary Sin, who is the director of the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center and DuPont Planetarium. Dr. Sin will share with you what we can see in the daytime and nighttime sky from your own backyard. Feel free to use the Q&A section and we will have Dr. Sin answer some of your questions. All right, so let's move over to our astronaut reading our story. Give me just a moment. Story Time from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Welcome to Storytime from Space. To all of you kids in school, at home, or at your local library, or wherever you may be, I am Mark Vandehei on board the International Space Station. And right now, we are in the airlock module. You can see some spacesuits on either side of me that we're going to use to do some spacewalks in a couple days. This is my suit, and here's my commander's suit. The book we're going to read today is Next Time You See a Sunset. The author put a note in here that I really like. Never Stop Wondering, Never Stop Exploring by Emily Morgan. And it's, this book is dedicated by the author for my dad, Jim Stevens, my very first teacher. One of the things I really love about this book is the pictures. Like this one too. The next time you see a sunset, stop and sit down for a while. Stay very still and watch the sky change. What colors do you see? Do the colors change? Do you feel the air get cooler? What words would you use to describe the sunset? How does it make you feel? There's another great picture. I love how sunsets change all the time every moment you look at them. Sunsets are some of the most beautiful sights in nature. You might hear people say the sun is going down, but that's not what is actually happening. Have you ever wondered what is really going on? The Earth is turning. Earth is rotating or spinning around all the time. Earth takes 24 hours to make one complete turn. When you see a sunset, your place on Earth is turning away from our star, the sun. Here's a view of a sun of the sun from space. And for us in space, we're turning around the, the Earth as well. So we get to see sunsets, but we don't see them every 24 hours. We see them about every 90 minutes. And hopefully we'll see one together in a little bit. As Earth keeps turning, you see less and less of the sun until finally you can't see it at all. 
you see the darkness of space. Until the morning, when your place on Earth turns towards the star again. We call this a sunrise. But the sun is not really rising. It just looks like it is when your place on Earth turns towards it. The sun appears in the eastern sky every morning and sets in the western sky each evening because Earth is always turning in the same direction. Most globes have arrows near the equator that point in the direction the Earth turns. If you could look back at Earth from space, you would see that the sun lights up half of it while the other half is dark. So while one side of Earth experiences day, the other side experiences night. Along the line between darkness and light are the places on Earth where day changes to night and night changes to day. People in those places are experiencing sunrise or sunset. Here's another great picture. So on the space station, we see a sunset when we're passing from the sunlight into the shadow of the Earth. So find your place on a globe, then find the place directly opposite your city. Just think, when you see a sunset, the people on the other side of the world see a sunrise. As you are ending your day, they are starting theirs. In fact, the sun is always rising and setting somewhere on the Earth. Earth never stops turning. You can sense Earth's spin during the day by watching where the sun appears in the sky. In the morning, you see the sun low in the east. As Earth continues to turn, you see the sun higher in the sky in the middle of the day. In the late afternoon, you see the sun low in the west. You can also see evidence of Earth's spin by watching your shadow change throughout the day. Have you ever noticed that your shadow looks different in the morning and afternoon from how it looks in the middle of the day? Have you ever wondered why? In the morning, your place on Earth is turning toward the sun. So the sun is low in the eastern sky, making your shadow long. Around noon, your place on Earth is almost directly facing the sun. So the sun appears to be overhead. This makes your shadow very short. In the afternoon, your shadow is long again, but on the opposite side of where it was in the morning. All of this happens because Earth is always turning. You can even sense Earth's turn at night by watching the stars appear to move across the sky from east to west. This picture is kind of neat because they did a time lapse. They took the picture over a long period of time. And so all the light showed up wherever it was. So the stars moved in a circle and the camera kept track of that circle. That's reminding me that a sunset's coming up really soon. The colors of a sunset can be spectacular. During the day, the sky is blue, but during a sunset, the sky changes to beautiful mixes of orange, pink, red, and yellow. Have you ever wondered why? As your place on Earth turns away from the sun, the sunlight has to travel a longer path through the Earth's atmosphere to get to your eyes. This causes the light to scatter and only the longer light waves, which are shades of red, orange, and yellow, make it through to your eyes. So the next time you see a sunset, remember that at that moment, your place on this big ball of rock called Earth is turning away from our beautiful star, the sun, into the darkness of space. Stay very still as you watch the sun slowly go out of sight and know that this is happening because Earth is turning. Isn't that remarkable? So let's go see a sunset from space. Thank you.
for story time from space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon. All right, wasn't that amazing? I would love to be at the International Space Station and be able to look out and see numerous sunsets throughout the day. Well, next, we're going to invite to the screen Dr. Gary Sin, who is the director of the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center and the DuPont Planetarium. Good morning, Dr. Sin. Good morning. I'm really happy to be here and talking about one of the things that I love most, anything science related. When I was young, I was always intrigued by the world outside. I spent a lot of time exploring outside and had opportunity to go out and look at the night sky. And I didn't appreciate all of what I had at the time, but I grew up in an area with a very dark sky and I was able to see many stellar wonders, including the Milky Way galaxy. I just took it for granted. Uh, now that I'm here in South Carolina, it's a little bit more difficult to see the Milky Way galaxy, but Fortunately, I can just barely make it out from my backyard under really good, perfect conditions. But I do enjoy getting out and looking at the night sky. And I enjoyed the, the story time about sunsets. I'm going to take a look at my screen right now and share that with you. And here we have a sunset. And this is actually the sunset today from Aiken, South Carolina. And we're going to go forward in time and watch that sun set as we on Earth are turning away from the sun, as was described in the reading. So I'm speeding up time a little bit here so we can watch the sunset. And a fun thing to do as you're watching a sunset is to watch for the first stars that appear in the sky. Maybe even have a contest with somebody to see who can see the first of the stars that appear in the night sky. So the sun has set at this point, but there's still an effect from the sun. The sky is still pretty bright. 
you can't really see any stars yet, but if we keep going a little bit later in time, oh, here's one, one of the wandering stars that the ancient astronomers used to call it. It is the planet Jupiter. So if you look to the south this evening, and in fact, for the rest of this year, to the south and the southwest, you'll be able to see Jupiter. And soon later, you'll be able to see Saturn. If we, and you can see some other stars appearing now, if we go on over to the eastern part of the sky, rising in the east, right after the sun sets, is the planet Mars. So October is a great time to go to see three planets, Mars especially, because Mars, right now in October of 2020, is closer to Earth than it's been in about a little over two years. And over the next month or so, it'll be nice and close and large, and it'll be two more years, a little over two years from now, before we can see it this large and bright again. I'm gonna go back to the south because I'd like to look at our planets, Saturn and Jupiter, a little bit more. We'll go forward in time a little further. And as the night goes on, Saturn and Jupiter will get lower in the sky. There are some other nice bright stars. Antares is a nice bright star. It's a red giant star. In fact, you can make out the red giant star, the color actually in the sky. If you were to look at Antares, down low in the south, it's going to be the brightest star visible. I'm sorry, but the word Antares won't be up there in the sky for you. But if you look in that area, find that bright star, you should be able to see it and kind of glance to the right or left, looking away from it. We call this averted vision. You're not looking directly, but you're averting your vision away from the object. That allows the sides of your eyes to focus on that object, and the sides of your eyes can pick up those faint colors better than looking at it directly. And you should be able to see that it's a red giant star. That particular star is part of the constellation of Scorpius, which is the scorpion right here. Near Saturn and Jupiter is a fun constellation. This is the constellation of Sagittarius. And what is fun to me is this center portion of the constellation. And if you tilt your head a little bit to the right, you might be able to pick out a shape there. And it might remind you of a little song that you learned as a young child. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle there on the left-hand side. And here is my spout there on the right-hand side. And you have the lid and the body. So there's a little teapot in the sky that you can find. And that is the constellation of Sagittarius. At this time of the year, a great group of stars to see almost straight up right now is what's called the summer triangle there are three bright stars there this one here vega altair and this one is called deneb but those three stars are brighter than any others around and those three stars form a triangle shape it's called the summer triangle because all summer long from dusk to dawn that summer triangle is visible it's still visible now, even though we're in fall, because it's going to start straight up above our heads during uh, the early evening, right after sunset. By midnight or maybe a little bit after midnight, it'll start to set in the west. But it's still very visible and a good object or a good group of stars to look at at this time of the year. Another fun group of stars that I like to look at is this one right here. This is called Cygnus the Swan. And the center section, if you tilt your head a little bit to the left, you might make out it forms the shape of a cross. This is known as the Northern Cross. There's another cross that they call the Southern Cross. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see the Northern Cross, which we can see. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, you can see the Southern Cross. I wanted to mention this one because Cygnus the Swan, if you imagine the tail and the head down here, these are the wings, is flying down the Milky Way galaxy. And that's that little faint path of light that you can see there. And if you get into a dark enough sky, you might be able to make out that Milky Way galaxy. And those are billions, 300 billion stars that are too far to see as a single point of light but their combined light form that band that we call the Milky Way galaxy. Saturn and Jupiter are gonna be doing some interesting things this year, and I wanted to point that out to you. So look at the distance between Saturn and Jupiter right now. Here we are in October. 
I'm going to go forward in time from October to November. Now they're getting lower in the sky. I'm going to back up time a little bit here because it's darker earlier in November. So here is Saturn and Jupiter, and I don't know if you noticed, but in October, they were a little further away. Here, if you notice that distance, and then in November, they're much closer together. And we're going to go a little bit further day by day, and I'd like you to notice this day. Right in here, we have the moon approaching. So this is middle of November. Here comes the moon approaching Saturn and Jupiter on the 18th and then the 19th of November. The moon just goes past Saturn and Jupiter. Now this is happening in the evening sky right after sunset. We'll continue going forward and notice Saturn and Jupiter are starting to get even closer together until we get into December. And the moon comes by again, the same about time, middle of December. The moon is coming close to Saturn and Jupiter. We're going to go up a little bit higher. Don't want the sun to get in the way. Because in a few days, watch how close they are. And on the 21st, they are so close together that you can see both planets in a telescope eyepiece at the same time. So that'd be a great treat if you have opportunity to have access to a telescope. At that time of the year, our observatory will be open on the same day that we have public planetarium shows. And those two planets will certainly be targets of our telescope in the Bechtel telescope on the roof of the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center at USC Aiken. So there's just a little bit about our night sky, a little bit about the things that you can see, the planets especially, and I'm going to pause there and thank you for coming and joining us for our little bit of a look into the night sky. Thank you, Gary. That was very informational. Um, I, we do invite you to the planetarium. Check out our website at usca.edu slash DuPont Planetarium. And you can find out all of the schedules and find out when you can come to the planetarium as well. We hope you have enjoyed our first STEM story time today. We invite you to join us this afternoon at one o'clock when we will have a special guest from Plant Vogel who will give us a live virtual tour of Plant Vogel. Tomorrow, join us at 10 o'clock when we will have another STEM story time where we, well, where we will be exploring the world of engineering. One o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we will have another STEM Explorer series. On Thursday at 10 o'clock, we will have a STEM story time where we will explore and visit with a scientist. And then Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock, we will have a special guest with us that will explore the world of a turkey vulture. Friday morning at 10 o'clock, we will explore watersheds. And Friday at 1 p.m., we will have a special guest from the NASCAR Hall of Fame doing some wonderful STEM activities and incorporating NASCAR. So we hope you've enjoyed your time here. I don't see any questions here. Oh, oh, I do. Let me check that real quick. Oh, it does highs and thank yous. Well, hi back and, and you're welcome. So we hope you've enjoyed your time here. You can come back. You can invite people to watch this after the live event ends, the recording will be there. Just click on the same link you clicked on to join this one and you can watch again or you can send that link to other people. Everybody have a good day. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye.